Hi, and welcome to this week's From the Vault episode from the Magdalene House podcast. The Magdalene House is a recovery community for alcoholic women, known affectionately by many as Maggie's. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization based in Dallas, Texas. In our From the Vault episodes, we share past podcast releases from our four podcast series, Recover Ed, Studying the Steps, Recovered Interviews with Alcoholic Women, and Hope for the Family. Our podcast aim to connect, inspire, and educate alcoholic women, loved ones, and the community to the Magdalene House and the services we offer. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for listening. Hello, podcast listeners. Welcome to Cover Dash Ed, where our goal here is to educate you on the Magdalene House services, the disease of alcoholism, and the solution. Today, we are talking about why is two weeks enough? We have Ainsley Chapman, who is our director of outreach, and I'm going to let Ainsley introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for having me here. I have been with Maggie's for, I think, about six years now, and I am also a recovered alcoholic. I got sober coming through the Magdalene House. Um, I came through July 7, 2014, and I've been sober ever since, so I'm really grateful that I get to be a part of this. I'm a mom. I have a family. I sponsor women. I have a sponsor, um, so I try to stay really involved in my own personal recovery as well as you know working at the Magdalene House and trying to help women in that way as well. Awesome. Thank you so much. So my first question uh, for you, Ainsley, is why two weeks? What can possibly happen in only two weeks? Yeah, so, you know, I think that's such an important thing to talk about because we get that question a lot. So, you know, what can happen in two weeks? You know, the first thing that I think is really important to remember is that we are just talking specifically about one of our programs, which is a two-week in-house residential program for women who are um, addicted to alcohol and need a place to safely be removed from that. And so two weeks, yes, is a short amount of time, but, you know, we believe and what we've seen work is that it's plenty of time to first be physically separated from alcohol to remove that craving. And the craving that we talk about at Maggie's is something that happens after you start drinking. And so what happens is when an alcoholic first starts drinking, after getting that first drink into our bodies, we crave more and more and more. And so why the two week program is so important is that a lot of us need a safe place that we can go to be removed from alcohol to get it out of our system so that craving is no longer there. And so the two weeks is definitely plenty of time to do that. It's also enough time to get a sponsor to start working the steps with her and to get a really solid understanding of step one, which is really about learning what is alcoholism and accepting that as your truth. That is wonderful. I know one of the things that, um, you know, like you talk about is like building a foundation. Mm -hmm. And so like, can you talk about like, what is that foundation and how does the Magdalene house help you build that foundation? Yeah. And I think, um, you know, the whole purpose of that two week program is to build a foundation and it's really focusing on steps one, two, and three. And so for us, building a foundation is that first, you know, first we need to sober up um, and then second, building a foundation through the 12 steps and those foundational steps are steps one, two, and three. I think it's important too to talk about like, what are the 12 steps and what do you do in them? And really it's, it's a program of action, you know, in those first three steps, not a lot of action is required. It's a lot of learning and becoming willing and making decisions and just really getting connected with your sponsor and learning what you're about to be doing through the 12 steps. What about, I, I've heard this so much before, which luckily, you know, I have had my own spiritual experience and education to be able to like debunker this myth for myself. But I know there's going to be people on here listening who are saying like, you mean they already start working the steps? Like, shouldn't that be after they get out of treatment? Or Mm -hmm. uh, shouldn't they do all that stuff after they get out of treatment? Like, can you speak to that? 
Yeah, definitely. I think that's such a good question. Um, and definitely, you know, really good opportunity for education on, you know, what are the 12 steps and how do we practice them? You know, during that two weeks, because the women are so newly sober, you know, we, we get the alcohol out of their system and now what, you know, and I think that's where this mental illness comes into play is where we've completely sobered up. And now what do we do? We need some kind of solution. And if I don't start working towards something, some kind of big change in my life, then it won't take very long for my mind to tell me that it's a good idea to take a drink again, or the next time I take a drink is going to be different or whatever made me want to come in and get help won't seem like such a big deal anymore, you know, and that's how this mental illness works. And so it's so important that we really as quickly as we possibly can go into getting to work on the 12 steps and finding a solution. Otherwise, you know, my mind is going to go towards the solution that I've always gone to, which is another drink. Mm -hmm. So yes, you know, we start working the steps while in the two week program. But that continues for a lifetime, you know, and the real work starts after you leave. So the foundation is really just the beginning is two weeks enough, you know, yeah, two weeks is enough to make a beginning to build that foundation. We're not saying two weeks, you're going to be cured. Um, You may not even be recovered from alcoholism in those two weeks, but you sure are going to get a really good start and a place to kind of launch yourself out into a lifetime of, you know, really working this spiritual program. Yes. Oh my gosh. That was so perfect. So on the flip side of that, why is it that the Magdalene house curriculum only sticks to steps one, two, and three? So Step one is all about really accepting and understanding what your problem is. And so we talk about step one a lot. Um, One of the things that I am so passionate about is going out and providing education on alcoholism because you see it all the time. And I had the same experience when I came into Maggie's was hearing women talk about alcoholism the way that we do as a disease, that there's nothing to be ashamed of. And here's what the problem really is, that you have something different going on with your mind and something different going on with your body that makes us alcoholic. Um, And so it's so important for them and for us to understand what our problem is before we can work towards a solution. And so when we talk about step one, you have a lot of women coming in and talking about their experience with that and what that looks like for them. And I think you just never know when someone's going to tell their story and it's going to, you know, the light's going to come on and that other woman that hears it. So that's one part of it, you know, and then step two is about becoming willing that there's something greater than you, something bigger out there that's going to help you. That's really all it is. And then step three is about making a decision. And so those foundational steps, you know, we stick to those in in the two weeks because past that, you know, steps four through 12, like you're really out there getting out into the world, like in action. And so it makes it hard to do that when you're in kind of a residential program. And so what we want is to help these women build this foundation with steps one, two, and three. And then when they leave, they're prepared to get into action. You know, they'll be ready to go out there and meet with their sponsor and do their fifth step, meet face-to-face with people, make amends, and then eventually go out and help other women. That's so perfect. Thank you so much. So I know I'm listening and I work here, but I'm listening and I'm like, yes, yes. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. house, right? so I'm sure other people are thinking that too, but is everybody a good fit for a two week program? Yeah. So some people may need to go somewhere else first and that's totally okay. You know, some people have medical issues where they need a medical detox Some people have, you know, some larger issues outside of alcoholism, they may need to go to longer term treatment. And that's fine. You know, we, we definitely want women to get whatever help they need. So if somebody needs to go somewhere else first, that's a higher level of care than we provide. You know, I think it's also important to understand that again, like this two week program is not the only thing that we do. This is the beginning, you know, and so Yes, someone may need to go somewhere else to make their beginning, but that doesn't mean that we don't have something for them. 
And I think that's where a lot of our other programs come into play that you can go to other treatment centers, you can go detox somewhere else if you need to, um, and then you can still come and be a part of. So yeah, it's not everyone is the right fit, I would say, medically or physically to come into the two week program, but I would say any alcoholic woman is a good fit to be a part of the Magdalene house for sure. Absolutely. I can't say that enough because like you said, like this isn't the only program that we have. And if someone is able to go through the house, that's amazing. But even if they're not like still come on, you know, like we still still want you a part of our community, um, which I just was so cool. Now, uh, one thing that I did find interesting, which I didn't know until after I started working here is, you know, we do have a strict phone screening process. Mm -hmm. Like any, it doesn't just, if anybody's listening, it does not matter who you know at the Magdalene House, we are always going to tell you to call this office and do a phone (laughs) screening. Uh, Because I get those messages all the time. But what what I want to ask or what I want to be able to talk about it, and maybe, I don't know if you know this, but I would think you did is how our phone, like who created our phone screen and why we have those stipulations in play. Yeah, so we actually had our phone screening created from a licensed addiction specialist. So this was years and years and years ago, and we really haven't changed much on it, except for, I think we've added a few questions in, um, but we really haven't taken anything out from what he provided us. And so that has been, that has come from a medical professional. And basically those questions in the phone screening are really making sure that a woman coming into our program is going to be medically safe enough to withdraw from alcohol without any detox medications, Um, or without any medical staff. And most of the time that works, you know, like I said, I went through our program and so I was fine to detox without medication. Um, And we make sure to really keep an eye on the women, watch blood pressure, give them rest and fluids. And we, I think, do a really great job of taking care of them, especially in those first couple of days when it's really tough. And then For anyone who does the screening and something does come up that would maybe disqualify them from coming, um, it's typically something that is medical and they need a higher level of care. Awesome. Thank you so much. I I do think that is important for people to understand that there are reasons why somebody might need a higher level of care. And it's only because the best possible outcome for, for the women that we serve. Right, right. So... You were a social detox client. Mm -hmm. Can you talk from your personal experience what happened to you in those two weeks? Yeah. So two weeks at Maggie's, I, I was familiar with the house before I came in. So I knew a little bit about it as far as you know, I had come to meetings, I knew it was a place where women went to get help. I I didn't really know like all about the programming, what that was, but I came to Maggie's after a relapse, after having some time in the program and after having gone to treatment and detox and all those fun things and trying to stop drinking on my own and so many different ways. And so I came to Maggie's and my experience was that I was just met with so much love and understanding. And I think I cried every single day because every meeting, somebody was saying something that I thought I was the only one who had experienced it, you know, and it was like all of that stuff that made me feel like I was so different and I was so horrible and I was so ashamed. I was with this group of women. They're like, no, we've all done it. You know, you're not, you're not different. And I really, really, really got an understanding of what alcoholism is. And so I kind of got this full knowledge of my problem, but I also remember the one thing that just stood out to me so much was how much we talk about coming back and helping other people. And that was kind of the one thing that I had never done before. I wasn't really willing to go and sponsor. I didn't want to volunteer. I didn't want to go do things for other people. You know, I thought my recovery was all about me. And I, it was like every day, like I was reading my book and in these meetings and it was like, how did I not hear this before that I need to go out and help other alcoholic women. And so, you know, I just think that 
I was given this amazing community to be a part of and seeing other women come really inspires you to want to be a part of it. Oh, that's so awesome. So you also went to other treatment centers before coming to Maggie's. I'm sure mm-hmm. treatment centers that were longer than two weeks. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I hear regularly, I would say is from women who have relapsed and they said, well, I just don't think I, it was long enough. I just don't think mm-hmm. 30 days was long enough for me. What do you have to say about that? My question is always, you know, what did you do when you left there? You know, I think that there's a purpose for people needing to go to treatment for longer than the two weeks that we offer. Um, I always recommend the two weeks if that's the right fit for you, because I think it's just such a solid foundation and education. But if you need to go somewhere else, then that's okay too. But longer treatment is not the answer. You know, the answer is really taking what you've learned and then using it in real life. And if you're not doing that, you know, my experience is that I had been to detox, you know, just going a couple of days and sobering up. I'd been to treatment where I only stayed for a week and I went to treatment where I stayed for 30 days. I'd been in sober living, you know, but as long as every time I went somewhere else, I wasn't changing anything I did afterwards, then nothing changed in my life. You know, all that happened is I would get a little bit of time sober, I'd be completely miserable. And then I would drink again. And then I would go back to treatment or wherever I went and hoping for something different to happen, but not really taking any action, you know, so I think longer term treatment has its purpose, but it's not going to prevent you from drinking when you leave. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was such a great answer. If somebody wants to hear more about education or want maybe you to come do a presentation, how would they get in touch with you? How would they do that? Definitely. So um, a couple of things that we're doing right now are 90 minute presentations going over the disease of alcoholism. So I would just make sure to follow us on social media, look at our website. So go on our website and request a speaker and I can come to your organization or your business or whatever that may be and talk to you all about alcoholism and our services. And you can always just reach out to me through email or phone call. And I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. All right. And then what would somebody need to do to get into our two week program? So you would need to call and do a phone screening first. And I always like to tell people that it's a really quick process. I know sometimes when you know you have to screen or go through this interview process to qualify for a program, like you don't know when you're going to hear back. But if you call our office, the number is 214-324-9261. And do the phone screening, it takes, you know, five, 10 minutes, and then you should be either approved or given a referral to where you do need to go within that same day, you know, and so if you call and you screen and you're qualified, you can come as soon as that same day. All right, well, thank you so much, Ainsley. My final question for you is just, what would you say to the alcoholic woman who is still suffering? I would say that you're not alone. And it may feel like you're the only one who's going through it, but there are a lot of other people who have been there and have found a way out and just let us help you just give in and let us help you and um, be willing to follow instructions and it can happen. Perfect. Well, this was so great. I think it's so good. So thanks, Stephanie. This has been a re-release from the Magdalene house podcast for our from the vault series. We hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Tune in every Wednesday for a new release from one of our four series. To learn more about the Magdalene House and the services we offer, visit magdalenehouse.org or follow us on your favorite social media channels.